Cheers, guys. Hey guys, welcome to a beautiful sunny edition of the balcony sessions where I'm actually justified for, for one time to, to wear my sunglasses. Um, yeah, the last few days and the last few videos I've seen some, some really, really good questions being, being asked and so I thought it's the perfect opportunity to grab a beer with you guys and just we can have a chat. I'm just going to actually go over, over one question today that, that came up. Um, because it also sparked a, a really good answer from one of you guys out there and I just want to talk about that a little bit and uh, get a little bit deeper into it just in case you missed it. You're a little bit bright there? How's that? Any better? Anyway, um, so uh, Daniel O asks, asks, Hi man, can you explain if it's worth to buy H&M raw salvage denim for like $50 or less? Is it still done in vintage subtle blooms? Is it still made of cotton? Uh, what makes them worse than other expensive denims, if they are? Um, please answer, I really need to know. So, very good question. Um, and it was answered extremely well by Jeremy. Um, so, I'll just read this out in full. It definitely will be the best pair of jeans from H&M and possibly one of the best pair of jeans for that price. I have no experience with them, but Selvage does indicate some level of quality, which is very true, actually. Uh, they'll not have nearly the quality materials or quality control of a dedicated salvage denim brand. At best you're getting something on par with Levi's. They're made with shuttle looms but probably not vintage ones and mass produced. Okay, so that's the first paragraph. It goes on for two more, which um, I'm going to get to in a second. But I just want to, want to dissect a little bit of this. Uh, right, Jeremy is bang on with, with everything he says here. Um, they're definitely not going to have the same quality materials, not even close. And to even what I'd say, what I'd call entry level jeans, which are silver denim jeans that are starting around about the 100 euro mark, 100 dollar mark. I think if you're paying anything less than that, then you've got to question what shortcuts have, have taken place to actually get the jeans produced. That's going to be either on the materials, um, so that's including the cotton, the denim. We've woven out the cotton, obviously. The dyeing process, the actual hardware that's going on to it, and also how they've been produced and where they've been produced as well. Now that isn't to... Oh God, sorry. The weather's changing all the time here and it's getting incredibly hard to see if you can actually see me or just looks like a nuclear blast. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, production of cheaper salvage denim jeans. Now, I know that you can get salvage denim jeans for the 100 euro mark that are actually produced well out of quality materials with the quality hardware. We actually used to sell some back on the site. Um, we really we had a hard time, we really looked into this, uh, but we were confident after a while that we could offer you jeans at that price point with a level of quality we were happy to support. Um, however, when it comes to H&M jeans, yeah, quality materials are going to be subpar. I don't know what weight of denim it's going to be, but I imagine it's going to be pretty light. Um, on par with Levi's, I'd actually probably, I'd take a guess knowing what H&M is like and just say they're going to be much, much worse than Levi's. Um, this is an interesting point. Uh, they're made in shuttle looms, but probably not vintage ones uh, and mass produced. I mean, to a certain extent, most denims, especially sort of the entry-level denims, they're always going to be mass-produced anyway. It's just uh, par for the course. You know, the higher volumes, the the less money it's going to cost to to make uh, a pair of jeans. And um, so, it's going to be for the for the end consumer less money. But the problem is, the companies like H and M and and other big horrible mass-producing monsters like Primark. Um, they're actually getting a bit sneaky with this and they're realizing that salvage is a thing that's why they're actually producing salvage denim if they are but they're also producing totally normal jeans of an absolutely terrible quality and they've got like a, a tape that they just um, they weave this like narrow tape which can probably be done very very quickly and they're going to stitch this to the inside for maybe the first 15 centimeters 
I, I'm going to put a link to below where I covered that in in another in another was it balcony sessions another vlog. Anyway, I'll put a link below to that. So I want you to just be careful of that, and um, before you start spending your money on salvage denim jeans in H&M, it could be a bit of a con. So the next part of this, which I really really like, um, this is the answer from Jeremy to the question. But raw denim culture is more than just raw salvage denim. It's about quality, a long-lasting product that ages and grows with you. And to many, it's about sustainability and ethics. Here, I think, should address the theme of the episode. Now, uh, the comment on this was um, when I was talking about Anthony Bourdain and the tragedy of him taking his own life. Um, working conditions and suicide in clothing manufacturing is a serious problem. Uh, it's very, very true. There are numerous accounts of this occurring in factories of uh, most fast fashion brands. Raw denim as a culture is separated from fast fashion. It's able to support smaller operations which treats the workers fairly and provide them with good conditions. For these reasons, and to get the full experience of raw denim, it may be worthwhile investing in a mid-tier brand, New Day Naked and Famous, Japan Blue, especially if you can get them on sale. Um, I can't actually like, add very much more to that. I mean, it's, it's just, is 100% bang on right and it's very important that we that we realize these things I mean the conditions in these factories I mean they're just I mean it's hell on earth I don't think that that we over sort of in the West could could even imagine imagine those conditions existing um, I mean I've seen some some reports uh, where people have uh, snuck in behind the scenes and even just going to, to towns and factories in China and Bangladesh and seeing how bad the, uh, the environment impact on the, the, the surrounding area is and how bad the conditions inside the factory are, it's just, it is terrible. And for this reason, it's not, it's not the question, should you buy salvage denim jeans in H&M, the question should be, should you buy anything in H&M or Primark or Zara or I mean, this is just naming a few off the top of my head. Basically, any of these big chains, I I believe that you shouldn't, because it is just it's supporting this fast fashion monster. Now, whenever I say this, and whenever I'm talking about like raw denim and maybe sort of higher end craft of menswear, it's inevitable that the the question of price it always comes up and you know what it's fair enough I mean I do spend a lot of money on my jeans and and also my other items of clothing I do this because I don't spend money on televisions or computer games or I don't smoke I am I only drink very very cheap Berlin beer so my money goes towards that and it's my hobby and it's my passion I, I I'm aware that other people have got other hobbies other passions as well um, but a little bit more thought into how you're consuming and how you're buying. I mean, my guess is the person that's given me a hard time for, for spending a lot of money in a pair of jeans has got five times more jeans than I actually do. Um, or jeans, trousers, whatever. But they consider them as a disposable commodity that can be replaced in three or six months. That's not what raw denim is about and it's not actually how I want to consume. So yes, I do spend more on my clothing, but these are going to last me longer and I'm going to make more of an attachment to it. And that point that Jeremy had about sustainability, that's always been something that's been, when I grew up with that, I won't say my parents are hippie, but they were, um, they were certainly very concentrated on the environment. Um, and it was always, it was a theme of conversation in my household before, um, before I actually sort of got into the, the vernacular that it is today. So yeah, should you buy your salvage denim jeans, sorry, I'm going around in circles as I normally do. Should you buy your salvage denim jeans in H&M? No, you shouldn't. And I'm going to go as far as say you shouldn't buy anything in H&M at all. There's alternatives out there. Um, buying vintage, buying second hand, that's a very good alternative. Even if you're buying a vintage pair of, not vintage, I can't say that, a second hand pair of H&M jeans in... I don't know, we've got second-hand outlets here in Berlin, lots of them. That's still way, way better than, than going in and buying them new. 
one thing you're supporting perhaps a charity I certainly hope it would be that way um, and the second thing is you're actually adding longevity onto this this item and it's not just going to into landfill and you're probably going to find that the quality of garments you're going to get in these second-hand places because they haven't fallen apart and because they've actually made it as far as being hung up in a store they're going to be higher quality than the shit you're going to get in H&M and may not be a selfish pair of jeans, but if you're in any way interested in sustainability, mm, that's definitely your best bet and your best best way to go. And you can get some really amazingly styled things. What else can we do for sustainability? I mean, I was in, it's a little bit harder to find and a little bit more controversial, especially in Germany. Um, but I was in Amsterdam the other day and I passed by an army surplus store. Um, something in between like vintage and an army surplus but they had some absolutely amazing amazing pieces of clothing dirt dirt cheap that are actually very very stylish i mean for less than a hundred bucks you could get yourself top to toe with like a great pair of trainers amazing pair of trousers um like proper tailored trousers fishtail parka um and some t-shirt sure something of this description and if you're in anywhere sort of style conscious or into the aesthetics you'd be able to put this outfit together like that i was really really impressed i am aware that the military aesthetic doesn't work for everybody and it's sometimes with kind of like more negative connotations here and there but that's also another way to to buy sustainable um if you're not wanting to like completely break the bank but yeah, we've got a little bit further away from the topic. Um, the last point is, I mean, yeah, you can get a, a brand new, not on sale pair of decent quality selvage denim jeans for around about 100 euros, I believe unbranded. Uh, they're made by the same guys that make the Naked and Famous jeans. They're around about 100 bucks. Um, I hope they still make them. I've not seen them in a while. For like 30, 40 bucks more, you're into Naked and Famous territory, uh, nudie territory as well, fantastic jeans. Um, like a few bucks more, you're you're onto Japan Blue, I mean that's like proper Japanese denim, it's it's cut for, for the European figure, they're just, they're brilliant jeans as well. Um, yeah, when you're up to around the 200 mark, you're at the Telesons, you're at the 316, you're at the left field. So, there's possibilities out there and I'd really, Daniel, I'd encourage you just to, to wait a little bit longer, put a little bit more money aside and and get a pair of jeans that, that are going to last for one thing, that's not feeding this fast fashion monster um, and they are really, you're going to get that proper raw de denim experience that Jeremy was talking about. I mean, that's something that's so special and it's so important if you're actually going to get into this world that you really identify with. Excuse me. That you really identify with this this part of the culture, which is pretty much anti fast fashion. Um. Okay. Right. I think I've ranted a bit long about this. Um. And maybe taking you around in a few circles, but it's something that I I believe pretty passionately in, and it's something I think is is very important and something I really value. So. So yeah. Hopefully you haven't um, been too bored by this and. Um, Hopefully you'll, you've got something out of this as well. Um, anyway guys, uh, listen, thanks very much for tuning in as always. Um, I'm going to be back in a few days uh, with something about when to repair my jeans. Yeah, my jeans are really needing to be repaired and what steps you have to go through to do that. So it's going to be something about that. Um, maybe I'm going to catch up with you for some more balcony sessions. Um, I hope wherever you are in the world, the weather is as glorious and I hope you've got a cold beer in your hand or whatever you want to drink. Um, and I will see you in the next one.